All right. Uh, <laughs> we're clear. That was awesome. I felt like I rambled a lot. I hope that I hope that you actually did learn something and that you're being genuine about that. Because I, if no, I, 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 just, I just lied. I made it up. <laughs> I didn't teach you anything. You weren't taking notes. There wasn't any books that I showed that were super cool. All my collection sucks. <laughs> actually, I was trying. I was trying to take notes, and I was having computer problems. Um, yeah, I saw that you were kind of pausing in that aspect, and I was yeah. like, "Oh man, should I talk slower?" But like, I have so much crap to go through, and, and well, it's it's not crap to me. Actually, it's all crap. Everything's crap, but it, it's fun and it gives me joy, and that's what I'm about. But that the yeah, your your dinosaur Cadillac dinosaurs were interesting. Oh, yeah. I made sure um, that I wasn't I threw familiar them. with that first appearance. Death Rattle. Number eight. Special Xenozoic uh, preview. And that's where the, the Cadillacs uh, and dinosaurs show up first. And then they had their Xenozoic Tales run. And then I think came Cadillacs and dinosaurs. Because that was after they had their uh, uh, CBS show. But I love dinosaurs. I used to have a dinosaur puzzle that I would like. It was like a simple puzzle, but I'd like do it endlessly as like a little kid. And I was just so fascinated with them. Is there, what, do you have any like, uh, what's something that you don't understand that you like that you, you like can't get enough of and you're super nostalgic about? I know Gary, um, Gary B was all about Conan on the last interview. Is there is there something that like you have like a, like a plethora of like either knowledge about or like you just really really enjoy that's kind of obscure? No, uh, probably not. Um, at least nothing that would be out of nostalgia. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of. I mean anything we collect we probably have you know some sort of yeah some sort of affinity to yeah right but but yeah nothing that i collect is really anymore anyways is really out of nostalgia i mean if i don't collect dinosaurs anymore i don't collect rocks anymore uh, <laughs> that was so so are you what's what's the goal of your collection uh going forward uh, keep me from getting bored. Okay. And and I eventually I'll probably get bored. It's it's coming, I'm sure. Um, yeah. And I'll we, move on to something else. It's it's in the back of a lot of our heads. Like, what's going to happen after? Like, what are we? Where is this going? And and if if you're anything like me, if if you stop learning or getting knowledge, like it becomes kind of monotonous and repetitive, and it's every right. single. And it's like, how can I keep this up? Like, if, if not, like, from a commitment perspective, like, we all have channels, so we're committed to a certain extent, extent uh, to produce something. But if we get burned out, like, what happens? Like, nobody's, nobody's going to harangue us for stopping and moving on and being happy with ourselves. So. Right, right. Uh, and, you know, and I know the things I collect are, you know, in the book-wise, are things I'll never be able to put the runs together just because, okay. um, because of some of the stuff being golden age and there being literally five and six figure books yeah, in the, exactly. in the, in the runs. Yep. Um, yep. So you get most and, of and, the and way it's not there, like it's just, there's... just one, there's multiple five and six figure books in the run. So absolutely. Um, that's, that's, and that's ridiculous to try to, have that kind of like we both kind of touched on being completionist but like if you have that kind of disposable income yeah. what are you what are you doing messing around with comics in that aspect right right and i and i you know keep thinking well all these high dollar books you know if i had to pick one and people talk about grails all the time you know what's your grail what's your grail yeah you know, and it's interesting because everybody's grail is a little different. Yep. Um, may not actually be an expensive book. Maybe. Nope. It's not always about the money. Not at all. Yeah. It's it's 
uh, may just be one that's hard hard to find. Yep. Um, we assume it's expensive because if it wasn't, you'd assume the person would have it. Yeah. Why Why is it a grill at that point? If it's a ten dollar yeah. book, just go buy it. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, or unless I, I I can't remember who it was. I was talking to somebody, and it was their grail was. Um, I don't remember what it was, but it was like a hundred dollar book maybe. Yeah. But the only way they wanted it was to find it in the wild. They didn't want to buy it. Oh, okay. So it was a, it was a more of a treasure hunt. In that, that right. Aspect. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, if they, they, they wanted to see it on the wall at an LCS or find it at a convention, yeah, they didn't want to cool. just, they didn't want to just get on eBay or my comic shop.com or whatever. You know, they, they uh, had to find it through a natural process, not order it. Absolutely. The ferret, going back to Malibu Comics, the ferret number three. I bought the first one at like, <clears throat> just like a random lot of cool number ones. And then I stumbled across the second one. And then the third one, it's like a $5 book. I can just buy it on eBay, whatever, and have it sent to me. But like, I want to help support the community in the aspect of like, I always reach out to people in the community first before I jump to eBay or like the online sites, because I like, they're, they're what's keeping the content going and what's keeping perpetuating the industry. Uh, so I'll buy from them first or have them search it. Like I have people searching for like the most random books for me. So I've got the first LCSs. three issues of the ferret. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I I need issue three. I thought that it ended at three. I think it ends at six. Ten. Uh, ten. Oh, it's ten. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah, well, exactly I gotta, ten. I got to get three through seven because the dude almost dies in the first one. And then he's still poisoned in the second one. And they somehow made it to ten. Like, it's Yeah, crazy. and that's the weirdest die cut cover on that. Yeah, the, with the, yeah. And it has just like the cutout of his head. And it's yeah. just like the ferret. Uh, ripped from the pages of the protectors yep that's exactly what it is um but yeah i love supporting the community first in that aspect uh are you familiar with the beyonder it's a, yes. another in okay there is a going back to the treasure hunting kind of aspect of somebody wanting to find their grail in the wild in the beyonder there is a uh a riddle that has yet to be solved and the creator recently went on an interview it was like this past tuesday and he goes okay so the riddle hasn't been solved yet uh and the person asked do you still have the prize for the first person who solves the riddle and he goes yeah it's going to be like the first page of the beyonder and and that's what he's given out he's like yeah it's just sitting over here waiting for somebody to solve the riddle because he was so entranced with like treasure hunts like there was a, I forget what comic book he referenced, but there's a treasure hunt in the comic book where the creator of the comic book buried something in the United Kingdom <laughs> where the comic book readers had to go find it. And they actually went out and found it. I was like, that is so immersive. Like, uh, I yeah, I heard the was... same thing about a, it wasn't a comic book, but it was a, a novel of some sort okay. written in the US. Okay. Um, where the, the author buried a treasure. That's so cool. Um, That's so cool. And left man. clues in the book. Yeah. Um, and then supposedly left instructions on how to handle the situation after his death in okay. a safe deposit box or something. Should he die before? Before somebody found it. Right. Oh, that's nuts. Oh, I yeah. Now I don't know if Jordan that's urban legend around. or if that's truth, but I, I seem to remember seeing it on a what tv show like an unsolved mystery show or something like that but either way it's cool as heck and i love the immersive quality of it like there there are books out there that have soundtracks that they want you to listen to while you read it just for that that second level of immersion yeah and i've got a couple of art books like that that came they oh, really? came with with soundtracks that's um, awesome that's so yeah cool. they were put out by a 44 flood they were okay kickstarters oh nice um, so it's uh, they were Tome Volume One and Two. Okay. Um, 
yeah, they're pretty. I mean, they're like big coffee table art books. They weigh like ten pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those, those, those real hefty ones. Yeah, yeah. There is. Yeah, a... they they both have a CD in the back of them. Cool. <clears throat> There's a couple books that came out recently, like they reprinted Crime and Punishment. <clears throat> and put illustrations throughout it and it's this huge hundred dollar book at the lcs um but yeah same with like going back to buy the horns they have a vinyl uh we live there's a barcode that you scan or a qr code that you scan in we live and it plays like this like seven track album of original uh music designed around the comic book and i was like that is crazy because like there are some books that like I'll read and they evoke so much emotion from me or transport me to like the the fantasy world, like the whole escapism aspect of like reading. Uh, and I'm just so entranced with it when you put like an auditory file on top of that or like, I mean, we have visual auditory. We're only missing like smell and need to like throw some smells out of the book and, <laughs> and really get the immersion. Uh, now, when you said crime and punishment, are you meaning like. The, the original, yeah, 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 novel. Yep, uh, I, I saw it recently. It was it was Crime and Punishment, but they had like random illustrations throughout the book. But it was the original uh, Crime and Punishment. And I think it's on yeah. I remember one. having to read that in in a philosophy class. Uh, of I course, believe. yeah. Okay, I never took philosophy. My favorite course uh, that I took in school was uh, it was drugs and behavior, and it was a it was a it was a class that had. Now was that a course or was that a course of action? <laughs> yeah, that was a course. Okay, but but Second. it also it also it also there's some overlap because this was a three hundred person course, right? And you know how, how college students are, like it's hit or miss whether they show up to, to class, at least in the US. The, uh, the class was you had to basically fight for a seat because the class was completely full. And when there weren't enough seats, there was like standing room only in the back because this professor systematically went through every single drug and it's short-term side effects, long-term side effects, everything. Like how it made you feel, what's the proper way to like take it. And like the questions from the audience were just the most off the wall things. Like they'd raise their hand. So let's say that I, I took uh, uh, six grams of, of yada yada and <laughs> I mixed it with blah, blah, blah. Uh, what would be like the, pro and like we would get like these debates where like we learned that there's only three uh, receptors in your brain for stimulants. So if you, if you're, if you're an avid drug user and I'm not promoting drugs, but if you have more than three stimulants, that's usually when uh, people will overdose. So like you're doing like cocaine, uh, it, it has to be stimulant. So cocaine, uh, let's say you're taking speed and uh, ecstasy. Uh, if you like put anything on top of that, you will basically fry your brain and you'll shut down. And that's what leads to like the overdose aspect. Besides just taking like copious amounts of like one drug, you could also overdose that yeah. way. But like anything over three stimulants uh, there, you only have three, uh, uh, receptors, the capacity to accept three receptors, uh, in, at least cognitively through neuro, like, uh, neurotransmission. But it was, it was so fascinating because it was the only class that I ever went to where everybody took copious amounts of notes. Like this professor <laughs> was going through just like, I learned about peyote, mushrooms, LSD, uh, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, uh, every, everything, every kind of like either regulated drug. We didn't get that much into like pharmaceuticals and stuff. Cause that would be, that's more of like a doctor's course. Uh, but it was fascinating. Like it, we would learn the side effects of marijuana and the tar buildup in your, in your lungs. And it was just so, it was so immersive 
and it, it was definitely my favorite my favorite uh course but like i i took a step back in the classroom and i go why is this classroom always full and why is everybody just zoned in paying attention taking notes and it's because it was a fascinating topic and and well people were doing drugs so and they wanted to know and there's nothing wrong with the pursuit of knowledge but at the same time like uh people had their reasons so yeah i always thought that was an interesting story uh, crime and punishment okay so it's crime and punishment in illuminated edition it's a hundred dollars even and it's from uh i don't know how to say his name fyodor dostogovsky dostogovsky yeah. okay from the 1866 novel. And it comes in like this beautiful slipcase. And it's huge. Yeah. Uh, and that came out uh, middle of August. So that on your pickup list? It almost was, but like, I don't know. They sold the sealed copy, so they, they only mm -hmm. have one more. And it's open and it's so how many rough. times have you read read it i never zero yeah, we'll, yep go to the library first <laughs> yeah i mean to save the money like there's a lot of books that you can pick up from the library there's uh my girlfriend or my past girl it's like weird we're taking a break i don't know how to talk about it uh we her mom's a librarian and we get uh discounted comic-con passes and we don't have to wait in line for san diego comic-con so we're always guaranteed passes because she's an industry worker and that's uh she like constantly promotes graphic novels and having books in her library and we're constantly going to like editors and publishers and saying hey like let's get these out to some kids and get it in these libraries. And it's, it's kind of a cool aspect from that uh, perspective of go to your library. Like it's, it's, there's so much knowledge to be had and, and there's like, there's online databases too, that you can get access to. All you have to know is a college student and get login or pay the school if you right. want to perpetuate that. Uh, but yeah, there's there's so much. When I had access to my, uh, when I went to college and I had ac access to their extensive library of research stuff, I just found myself reading random uh, books. And then I have a, a pretty nice collection. I forgot to say this. I have a pretty nice collection of uh, like medical books, like from like anything from neuroscience to like surgery and stuff like that. And I'm just when I'm bored, I go in and I spend some time learning and it, it's, it's really fun from that aspect. Yeah. Um, I, I like those big artsy type books like that. Um, yeah. you know, they're, they're expensive. They look good, but, um, I've got enough stuff around to look just to look at uh, or put on the shelf and never look at but yeah, if it's something I actually will read again. Uh -huh. Um, then yeah, I'll buy an expensive copy of it because yeah. it's something I'm, I'm actually going to use. Like, um, it's been a while since I bought anything like that, but uh, are you familiar with uh, Shauna May? Shauna May. It's a Persian epic. Um, the, the, uh, Let me see if I... It's, uh, it's like S-H-A-H-N-A-M-A-H or M-E-H. Uh, I got the, it. The author was uh, Ferdowsi. Um, it, it's a, just a Persian epic along the lines of, you know, Iliad, Odyssey, Gilgamesh, which wow. I'm, you know, huge, huge Gilgamesh um, freak. Epic but, Gilgamesh, yeah. Yeah, big on Gilgamesh. But but this I found out so about cool. the Shahnameh, and I'm like, well, man, that sounds pretty cool. So I bought a cheap copy of, of book one. Uh -huh. And started reading it and, and was into it. And then I found these like super expensive hardbacks with all sorts of gorgeous artwork in them. Um, 
And I'm like, okay, this I'm hooked. This thing is cool. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. So I bought, you know, all three volumes of the of the hardbacks. And I, it's still something I read, like Gilgamesh. Uh, you, you know, every couple of years I pick it up and, and, and read it. Um, this thing is cool. Yeah, yeah, that's the Persian Book of Kings. That's nuts. You know, but but like most, you know, epics, there's you know they all have their their creation story. They all have some sort of a destruction, a bi biblical flood type story. Yep. Um, there's so many all, parallels through all these different all cultures. And it's so fun. And that's that's uh, the the most recent book that I read. It was Verge. Uh, by Red Five Comics, and I am a sucker for maps and period pieces. Like, if you can tell me about a time that I had no idea about, like that is so immersive to me. Like, and what do you mean by maps? Uh, just ma somebody asked that, that same thing. Uh, the any kind of map. I I love maps and and topography and geography. I love all of it. Like it. Um, I was talking to Sith Lordly uh, in a chat, and he said that his like it was like his great 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 grandfather was like the commander of George Washington, and they made the first map of Virginia, the first known map of Virginia, and it was just it was it was just awesome. Like I love I love maps, and just like maps with notes, maps with the different terrain and i i just find such fashion fascination with that and then period pieces the the fascination behind that is the just the unknown like the storytelling that's gone through the course of time and it's somehow dropped on our doorsteps and we get to learn about those same stories that happened way before us i i love the the, the amount of knowledge that you can get from that so Oh, you're pulling out some maps. I know it. Oh, you're going to kill me. Maybe. That's fine. Take your time. I'll, I'll learn some more about Ferdowski. Ferdowski. Legend of his lifetime. So, oh, this is all about like sultans and stuff. This is awesome. I don't think I want to know the uh, the price of the hardbacks for Ferdowski. Ferdowski, <laughs> Shaname, hard covers. Oh, cool. The Epic of the Persian Kings. All right, what do you have? Yes. I, so, love, uh, I just love maps. Anything, yeah, like, this is... like how they how they attributed like figuring out what things were and where things were located. This is just to kind of you know further along the story. Yeah, it's so immersive. Um, but it's I'm trying to uh, talk the artist into parting with it, but. Oh, the actual map. Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I uh, same with uh, uh, going back to my favorite uh, uh, comic by the horns. There's a map in every issue, and oh, it's wow, every issue, every single issue. There's a map that the main character draws and the monsters that she faced across it, and like little tidbits about it. And I'm talking with the artist right now to get a commission of like a map of like. Because, like, by the horns, like, they have this whole expanded universe. And I want to try to get him to draw me a map. And it's going to be fantasy-based. It's not going to be, like, real or anything. But I, I, I love I love artistic depictions of topography and geography. It's just so fascinating to me. So did you ask the artist um, about the, you know, originals from the book, if the pages were available? He draws digitally. Oh, uh. Everything, hundred so, percent digital. Yep, hundred percent digital, and it, it's that's a that's a topic that that actually needs to be discussed more. I think because there's this whole 
like painted pictures are, are amazing. And it's kind of like a landscape that's being lost because of the convenience of digital uh, art. You can erase so much easier and back up mistakes and change things. Just everything's layered in digital art. But, right. And it's, I mean, obviously I, I prefer a one artist piece uh -huh. you know, where the, where this one artist does start to finish, but um, you know, most of the time you had one artist doing the pencil and then you had an anchor coming in then somebody different was going to coloring a yeah. lot of hands involved, yep. but uh, you know, the next best thing I guess is a lot of artists now are doing, they're doing the initial drawing on a tablet yeah, and then printing out the blue lines and then hand inking and coloring. Okay. Yeah. So, could, so you're, you're still getting a, an actual artist hand on yeah, the it. The same kind of, uh, you can see strokes of things. Right. And I talked with Austin uh, LeMay about this and he, he brought up the fact that he notices in digital art, what programs they're using. He goes, yeah, oh, he yeah, said if they're, he's, he yep, knows he, what what brush they you they picked yep, out to he, do whatever stroke they did. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and he knows. But, but he uses program. it enough that he can definitely right. pick that out. I mean, he's, yeah, because he's using the same brushes. Yeah. So, but then he also draws too, and it's it's. I was kind of upset, but then also I know that when I get something from this artist, it's going to be like a completely done by him. So. You right. gotta balance. You gotta balance the two. So, uh, but yeah, I don't think that's talked about enough. The the transitional period, and then like how things are shifting towards digital, but then digital prices aren't. Because like, how can you charge the same amount for a digital comic book, and not produce a product? Like, you don't own that comic book. You don't have like a physical copy. Right. So why should it be cover price? And I think that was like an industry thing from what I've heard from people in the industry was like, this is how we're saving LCSs. Because if we completely shift to digital, there won't be an LCS anymore. Right. Because the hard copies won't even matter. And I think eventually, like the magazine industry well, got Well, that's the sort tanked. of double-edged, I think. It, that's, I think that's a side effect okay. of them being greedy. That's, okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's I don't think they were being altruistic, you know, from the from the get go. I think okay. they said if we if we put out a ninety nine cent book, the artist or the publisher is losing something. Correct. Yeah. You know, but if we put out a four ninety nine book, they're all still making their same cut. Yeah. Plus, you know, the benefit is the LCS is is making something and staying afloat. Yeah. So, but. Okay. I, I mean, maybe they did, you know, say we've got to keep the little guy alive, but I'm, I'm sure it came down to the money out of the publisher's pocket Absolutely. and the artist. Yep. A lot of, a lot of conflicting issues. I, just I could say the money. Cre creators, not just artists, but yes, I understand. Um, uh, but yeah, cause I mean, yeah, every digital book should be 99 cents at the most really. Yeah. Because what are, what are like what are their what's their overhead? Like yeah. <laughs> they sell so many copies, but it doesn't cost them to produce the second copy. It just costs them to produce the actual initial edition. Yeah, I mean you can get full novels for between ninety nine cents and four ninety nine at most, but I mean usually a dollar ninety nine is. Yep. I'm out here. I'm out here trying to buy like. Three hundred dollar uh, liquid vanadium redux flow battery books, so that I can learn about like different types of batteries. <laughs> like that's 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 what's on like my shopping list. It's like the I I'm just a sucker for science. I love science. <laughs> Any kind of aspect of that. Thanks for showing those maps, especially the the epic, the epic of oh, the Persian kings. That's yeah. Rough fantastical um and then that that map from the other one that was from chasing the dragon yeah which it actually you can still find the issues um uh -huh. well you probably can't find them in the lcs's but you can find them online 
Uh, the trade is out now, though. Okay. It was a good series. Oh, Chasing the Dragon is another form of smoking heroin from Urban Dictionary. That's fun. I got to realize well, that the comic industry the, the, is kind of The small. premise of the, of the book is Dragon's Blood uh -huh. is actually a drug now. And they're making synth synthetic dragon's blood, and so there is some overlap. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes, definitely a dual meaning. Fair enough. At least they're cognizant of what the title uh, insinuates. Yep. <laughs> yes, it was definitely intentional. Okay. Cool. Um, geez. Yeah, they probably would have sold more if they would have, you know, publicized that it was a drug book. <laughs> <laughs> instead of like basically saying that it's like high fantasy <laughs> and there's dragons um yeah it, it, the first issue went to second printing i and i think that was it okay um do you collect multiple printings it did it, it just depends okay. it depends on how you know invested i am in in the the book like that one i did uh because i know the artist oh cool. um, okay so you actually but, have like a connection yeah, to it buddy mask um actually i don't know if there were any second printings there are multiple covers there, on first printings yeah there was uh the exclusive covers and then the aftershock cover that we both showed off that was damaged and then um uh, the one in 10 or I think Aftershock does one in 15s. Yeah. Then there was the, uh, ambassadors. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, That's uh we have to hit up E-Man for those. Uh, there's tons of ambassadors though. I met the ambassador, the Aftershock ambassador for my LCS. He was dropping off like stickers or something. Um, the, the main question that I wanted to ask you based just kind of on our, on our, uh, conversations that we had was like, if, what are, what are your plans going forward with your, with your collection? Do you have plans or are you just kind of going yeah, about it, it? Once everything is a hundred percent cataloged, uh -huh. I'm really close. I've got oh, cool. like somewhere between three to five short boxes to go. Oh, that's it. Wow. Okay. And, and then, I'll, then I'll be a hundred percent catalog. Okay. Then it's going to, then it's time to start separating out things I actually want to keep versus everything else I'm going to sell. Okay. You know, lots of 50 cent and dollar books to sell. Yeah. You know, 10,000 of them probably. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, no. I'll, I've been, Look, look at the quantity yeah. of it. I mean, I we're we're all very cognizant of it. But yeah, but I'm going to start I, separating out, and I've started to do that a little bit with these black plastic BCW boxes. Yeah, so I'm put, putting my PC stuff in that. Um, cool. So you know, I've got there's my Walt Disney Comics and Stories box. There's my Dell Four Color box. There's a Conan box. You know, I'll start separating them out like that on the the big runs. Yeah. And That's then the little stuff maybe start alphabetizing, but Okay. I I'm, mean, I'm it's, hope it's... Up. Go ahead. Maybe weed it down to five thousand, give or take. Something manageable. Yeah. The the I always got like this great enjoyment. Like we would be on like these community hangouts, right? And you would be going through like these crazy books that I've just never seen before. And they'd be like these old Disney books. And I'm just like, oh man, that's super cool. Like I, I'd keep cutting everybody off because you're just casually flipping through these books. And like, I, I understand how you like Dell so much. Uh, and it was like the nostalgia factor was kicking in for me because like, I, I didn't even know these things existed. Like I'm, I'm, relatively new but like you can't really you can't really harp on me for being new to the industry because I'm, I'm i'm young i didn't have like time to jump into this uh but, but you same, weren't in it since you were a kid I mean, yeah exactly so i don't i don't have like the early aspects of it i have 
when I jumped in in like the middle 2000s. Like that's that's when I was introduced to it. So like my my knowledge is just so low and the time that I've had to read this. Like the the admission that I did about not reading a bunch of books, that's because I spent so much time organizing it and figuring yeah. out what it is. So when I sell something, like I I I like make sure that I read it before I sell it. Mm-hmm. And and I I actually get to know like what's going on in it and the knowledge behind it because I I'm not going to sit here and say, I don't know what the heck this is. Like somebody else take it. Like that's disingenuous. Well, in that I aspect. mean, I'm, I'm worse than you when it comes to reading because I, in the uh, new books, I've literally read uh, Chasing the Bet Dragon, Bunny Mask, and, and Parasomnia. Um, oh, you did read Parasomnia. Yeah. No way. Okay. Um, I am keep saying I'm going to start on Maniac. Of New York. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you know, he's got he's still got artwork for sale from that book. Okay. Um, got gotcha. you. But I, I haven't gotten to it yet. But I think I honestly don't know if I've read anything else. Wow. Um, okay. That's interesting. It's because like we don't talk about we don't talk about that. We just have the people who hyper read books and they they have their review shows. Yeah, and that that's the kind of knowledge that I was like absorbing was like I follow four or five, maybe six different review shows that I religiously watch in that aspect, and I get my knowledge from that, and I get the general concept, and it, it allows me to participate in these conversations that we have because it's like, oh hey, do you know about this book? And you're like, oh yeah, it's about blah blah blah, and blah blah blah, and this happens. Uh, I I just bought another piece of artwork, by the way. Okay, what'd you buy? Um, oh, I can probably show it. It seems like that's what you're leaning towards too. Is more I, I like, like the artwork aspect. I like my art. Let's see here. Yeah. What is that on? That's on camera four. Oh heck yeah! Because you say your favorite question to ask is what kind of artwork? Do you right, like? when it comes to the artwork. Yeah. So this is from. Um, oh, all out war. Okay. It's the Dick Ayers penciled page. Um, I forget who the anchor is now, but um, just a random war title page I've seen listed for a long time, and it just heck yeah, that's wicked. I like Willie's um, Jeeps. Finally. He made uh he draw he dropped the price and still had to make an offer and um I got it for eighty five dollars. Jeez, okay, cool. The uh Dick uh, Ayers and Romeo Tang Hall. Okay. I'm actually, actually I'm actually not I'm not familiar with the anchor. I'm sure he's inked a lot of stuff, but but I definitely know Dick Ayers. Nice. The uh I worked on a Willie's Jeep. Uh well, oh really? Yeah. They're, yeah, they're, I uh, I came close to buying one at an auction one year. Okay. Um 15 20 years ago. There's country there's, auction out in the middle of nowhere. Guy yeah. owned like six of them. Yep. Um, you get it relatively cheap, maybe like 3 4 5 6000. The he, depending on if it runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. the, he had one parts Jeep which I knew I didn't want. Yeah. He had one that was like, looked like it just ro- rolled off the showroom floor, like a oh. top notch restoration. Okay. And so then that's... the other two kind of looked like they just came off of the battlefield, um, but, <laughs> but, but they ran. Dinged up, but they um, still move. Okay. But they still ran. And, and at the time, it was more than I wanted to. I just wanted an old car. I wasn't, uh, they ended up going for, I think you're right on. They were around three or thirty five hundred a piece is what the two Yeah the the ran but were in bad shape went for. And then maybe like the the pristine one was like fifteen, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You you're again you're pretty close. I follow the parts the parts one went for around a grand. Yeah, just because like the the stuff is just so hard to find and they probably own a Willie's Jeep and it's easier just to buy it and then take what they need and then part out the rest. There's all kinds of online forums for car communities. Like name the, the brand. The same, I do remember the same person bought 
the parts car and the two rough ones. And then okay. somebody different bought the one that was pristine, pristine and ready yeah, to they're, go. They're a collector. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, the I used to go to car auctions. Me too. All the time with a, a buddy of mine, just just kicking tires mainly. Um, it's fun to go and look at cars and pick one out and go, yeah, I'd, you know, wouldn't mind having that one, and then to see how much it goes for. Yeah, absolutely. I would go to some of the bigger ones too, like Meekum Auctions and Barrett Jackson. I watch uh, those occasionally, but I mean um, they're they're boring, but it's all like a showmanship uh, kind of aspect. Yeah. They're real loud and they expect you to get caught up in the auction, the excitement of auction bidding and whatever uh, dopamine receptors they activate while you get the excitement of buying something and competing against other people for it. The whole business model of eBay. Yeah. In a nutshell, <laughs> yep. Yep. Except you get snipers on eBay. That's that's me. There's nothing wrong with it. You get what you want. I'm not out here haranguing them because I do the same thing. It's the it's the way their business model was made a certain way, and you put a timer on something. Why not take advantage of the timer? Why any bid that goes off before the last like minute, you're just raising the the ending price for yourself, anyways. Remember, we're going to an auction and had. Are you familiar with the Lincoln Zephyr? I don't know. Uh, yep, yep. When, when you look it up and look at a picture not, of it, you'll yeah, it remember, sounds remember seeing it. Super familiar. Um, and at the time, I was looking for a parts car, project car. Like how? And, it's, it's like a big car, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and we went to this auction out in the middle of nowhere and they had this, the guy had probably 25 cars had a huge barn for cars. Um, and back in the corner with this old Lincoln Zephyr. Um, I didn't know the significance of the car at the time. I just looked at it and I'm like, that's pretty fucking neat. Yeah. Um, it was a, it was a 39 split window. Oh, um, okay, cool. Oh wow! Thirty-nine awesome. Zephyr split window. Yeah, I and see, I see. it, but it was parts car. It was rough, it, but they said all the parts were there, minus, and they listed what the car basically needed. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought, well, this would be pretty neat if I could pick it up for, you know, four or five grand and yeah, get it under, finished. Anything under anything under ten. Um. And come to find out that at the time this particular model whatever else was special about it it was only the 11th known to still be in existence <laughs> and as a parts car sitting there as is it's uh -huh. sold for like 40 some thousand holy crap <laughs> one of 11 and it's a parts car it, as a, right okay um, so yeah it's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar car basically yeah, but you figured so, you'd get like so a I, after that, one. I figured I had expensive taste. Um, Fair enough. They look nice. Put some nice white wall tires on them. Really pronounced. Yeah, it wasn't long after that I ended up getting the Mustang instead. Gotcha. Uh, what's the condition of your Mustang? It's it's. Uh, frame up restoration so it's oh cool yeah it's it's pretty good we uh when we restore we'll like we'll take every bolt to the bench grinder shine it up or, or clear basically uh clean it up and then clear coat it all and then screw it back in um and like these things are awesome yeah Jeez, yeah, I love but, the, the enclosed wheels in the back. Nice convertible top. But yeah, specifically that split window is what makes it that one rare. Oh yeah, I, I haven't found a picture of a split window. So 
Yeah, because yeah, the rear the rear window is actually it's instead of one long one big window, it's two. Yep, it's split down the middle. Yep, and that's that's tough to do on on those kind of cars too. There we go. I like uh, I want to get a nineteen eighty nine as a loud car. Uh, uh nineteen eighty nine uh Pontiac Trans Am. Uh, and I want to have like the the flaming chicken on the front, and have like a loud paint job, and have like the big head scoop, and uh, uh, I, I just have like a weird affinity towards that car, and I don't know why. Uh, uh, eighty nine Trans Am. Yeah, eighty nine. It's the uh, right before they started uh, really messing. Oh no no no. Is it 79? 79, 60. It's 79. 1979. Sorry. 1979 Pontiac Trans Am. It's the 10th anniversary. I forget that they started in 69. Yeah. 1979 Pontiac Trans Am. That's uh, on my bucket list. Or not bucket list, but like that's on my uh, desirable cars. And then there's this, uh, there's this flaming... Uh, Everybody has their flaming chicken on it, but there's this uh, chicken, Louisiana hot chicken place uh, that's near me. And I spoke to the owner and I said, hey, if I get a Trans Am, can I throw your uh, your Louisiana hot chicken emblem on the on the hood of the car? And uh, I, I think I got him to pay for the paint job. If I, huh. if I, if I get it done, he's like, oh, heck yeah, I'll... <laughs> And uh, uh, I thought it was just a cool concept. It'd be one of a kind in that aspect. And it'd still look like a Trans Am, not taken away from it. But instead of like the the eagle that they have on it, it'll be like a, an actual <laughs> flaming chicken. And I, I, I just thought it'd be good. It'd only be popular around here because like it's a restaurant that's there's two locations and they're both in L.A. Uh, but it's super popular. It's the best fried chicken sandwich I've ever had in my life. Uh, it's like the what, only the, reason that I won't go vegetarian. What's the name of the place? Howlin' Rays. Howlin' Rays. H a w h o w l i n Rays. R a y s. And it is the best. If you're ever in California and you want a nice chicken sandwich, fried chicken sandwich, and they're spicy too, so you gotta you gotta be. You got to understand what your spice level is that you like because they'll go from Carolina Reaper to just like KFC country chicken or Popeye's chicken. Uh, but it's absolutely delicious. And then there, it's like a red flaming chicken uh, that I want to get the logo of. And I was just going to slap it on the hood of the car just for shits and giggles, to be honest. Uh, and yeah, if I get a free paint job out of it, why not? <laughs> that's yeah, like the all most the better. expensive. That's the most expensive part of the car. The engine and the paint job. Oops. Jump my remote. Yeah, I've always I've like I said, I've always wanted to ask what your what your resignations were with your collection where you're leaning towards so i feel a lot of us are starting to hit that moment where the repetitiveness of it is starting to burn out and the people that have left the uh left and then come back they're starting to like have that same kind of nostalgia factor wear off you know and that's that's i guess one reason i collect some of the things I do because they're not things you can just, you have to look for them. You know, yep. it's, it's a hunt. You've got to go out and buy. Um, and then there's always a challenge of getting them, you know, reasonably. Like I, yeah. hopefully <laughs> so by the time this airs, I'll have gone through this box I got over here, but I just got a short box in the mail. This was filled with books. Oh crap. So how much did how much did that cost to ship? I I was trying to add it up. Um 
ballpark it was um about eight hundred dollars for the hundred books okay shipped okay including and, shipping so yeah yeah i understood that uh, the and the contents were what um, era are we talking about postage paid 17 pounds yeah it doesn't have a shipping price on it um okay. they were all dell four color oh shoot okay um so it was all gold <laughs> and silver books <laughs> the, with the, the exception so there, there was 103 books. Uh -huh. I paid 200 for GI Combat. Okay. So that means for the prototype Sergeant Rock. Yep. So that means I paid 600 basically for the other 100 books. So $6 okay. a book for Gold and Silver Age, yeah, Dell the, the, Four Color. That's like the the good luck finding these books package. <laughs> so. <It's, laughs> And I, I got some duplicates in there, but, you know, the guy had them listed. I've had pretty good luck of finding people that have a bunch of books online. Yeah. And say, hey, how much for all of them? You know, yep. you've got you've got 50 listings where you've got one or two books per listing. How much did you sell them all to me? Absolutely. Um, and I've had pretty good luck of, of getting them, I mean, at least half of what they were asking just by taking the whole lot. Yeah, why not? I um, mean, that's that's the whole like. There's a whole psychology behind yeah. that of when you lump something together, you can ask for less because they're selling more than they thought that they were. Even though that like one thing, as long as you don't get under the cost of like what the one thing was that they're trying to sell, right? Everybody's perfectly fine with that. Oh, I could get with, rid of all this for two hundred dollars more. Like heck yeah, take it. And then you get like in the end a good deal. There was a. Uh, a person who I went over to his house, he was selling comic books and I didn't realize how valuable this guy's collection was. And he had a garage full of comics, like just stacked completely. Everything was organized. He knew the prices of all the stuff and he had a shipping container that he was loading and shipping overseas of one buyer that is just buying up most of his collection. And it was just like, he's been, he was like this 80 year old guy and he had been collecting his entire life. And there was like, he kept, like he kept everything in pristine condition. The action one comics that I sold, the first reprint that I sold to Mark. Yeah. Um, Legion of comics was from that guy's collection. Everything was so freaking clean. Uh, and he invited me over to his house and I spent like six hours with him. Just, I was learning so much and he had so many stories to tell. And it was just so fun to be like a part of that, of this guy sharing his collection with me. And it, it, it was, it was really like, I only brought like $800 with me and I spent all of it. Uh, but it was, it was so cool sharing. Uh, like he was telling me stories about like, stan lee and stuff and like uh, about like the industry and like where it was going and what he thought and it was just really cool to see his perspective uh and he sold me a a plaque which was amazing spider-man uh the first appearance of amazing spider-man uh asm 15 right or no the what, what's the it's asm 15 right the why am I blinking on this? Amazing oh, Fantasy? It? Yeah, Amazing Fantasy. Jeez, why, why am I saying ASM? Amazing Fantasy 15. Is that your Mustang? Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so this, this was after uh, I drove it to a car show in Fairfax, Virginia at uh -huh. a NRA headquarters. Okay. So it was about uh, 500 miles. Nice. Thanks. Okay. It was the, was the engine rebuilt? <clears throat> yeah. Me. Yeah. A total rebuild on the engine. Okay. Um, and then how many, what's your odometer? Uh, it was at the rebuild. It was 
60 thousand give or take okay cool so not much no yeah I, yeah i mean i don't know i don't know what you call a lot for that year car but then i did i did the interior very nice and i, I had love somebody, all white interior yep yeah, i had somebody that knew what they were doing do the body work i'm not a body man or an engine man okay yeah you'd like our mustang <clears throat> wow I'm getting like frog throat. You'd like our Mustang too. It's also uh, light blue, all, all white interior, uh, convertible. Um, uh, amazing fantasy fifteen. Why I just kept blanking for some reason. Um, he sold me a plaque. It's a sterling. Uh, it's gold and silver. Sterling silver. I forget the carrot on the gold, and it's this plaque that Stanley gave to his employees. Oh, is it, wow, you came a long way. Yeah. Oh, and it was red, too. Okay. No, it actually, if we, you can tell from this picture, it was oh, so originally. Back, so are you numbers matching then? I Yeah, I, uh, no, no, it's, it's unfortunately not. Okay. Um, I took it back to original color, and wow. I tried to keep it as, as original as I could. I mean, you can see how bad the floorboard was. Yeah, so I've, you know, I've stepped through floorboards before yeah. that were rusty. Well, I drove it for a year like this. Um, I, I bought it. I thought I was going to change the top myself, uh -huh. um, which that didn't work out. We've, uh... um, but I drove <laughs> it for a year with no top. Uh -huh. I just carried around a rubber rain suit with me. Got and, it. Um, that's a parts car I bought. Okay. Just so I could, you know, steal a few things out of it. Absolutely. For mine. And well, I got my pictures scattered too far. Oh, no, that's fine. The uh, but yeah, it it was pretty rough. Had to have. A lot of it was almost like building and building a new car. Yep, you learn so much through that process, though. We're more of Chevy people. I I'm I'm not that versed in Ford. Uh, yeah. The the last thing I had to get, which I don't have pictures of, I actually had to order a cow uh -huh. from Arizona, from Desert Valley Auto. Okay. Um, because the whole and they. All these cars in the, you know, in the Northeast were notorious for it. They get leaves and shit down inside yeah. the cow. Water would sit there. They'd yep. rust solid. Absolutely. Um, so I had to, I just had to get a new cow. Um, and I think, I think it cost me a thousand dollars just to buy a cow and have it shipped from Arizona. Jeez. I mean, it was. <laughs> So, no more projects. Yeah. It's if I get another to... one, it's, it, it's going to be done and, and drivable. Okay. Be careful if you buy it online, though. Make sure you see it in person. Oh, yeah. So, we got, we got kind of screwed in one of those aspects. Um, but to finish off the, the Amazing Fantasy story, like this guy sold me like a golden uh, silver plaque, and it was like Employee of the Month like a plaque that Stanley gave to his employees and there was only like a certain amount of them. And he goes, I can't tell you who I bought this for or bought this from because uh, Marvel would get mad at me. <laughs> so uh, I, I have one of those plaques sitting in my room that I can't say where I got it from. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, in terms of projects, like they take a lot out of you too. Like it's so much time and it's so much work. Every nut and bolt and every different size and every component of it. But it takes a real craftsman to put a car together. Right. I mean, shoot, it takes a craftsman to put a computer together. Uh, actually, no, I think anybody can put one together. <laughs> well, pl okay, plug and play, but like if you're like, soldering a motherboard and actually like making the chips and stuff 
Yeah, well, if you get on that level, then yeah, definitely. You rolling pictures back up now, it looks like. Yeah, I got about 20 minutes of uh, reorganization. Right. I planned all this out last night. I had everything separated and in a corner of the room uh, ready. And I had actually forgot one of the questions. Uh, and I wasn't ready for one of them, but I had everything else. So I wasn't ready for two of the two of the questions. How could you not be ready? I just I just blanked on getting the stuff for it uh, in terms of the show and tell aspect. But I did get my rock collection and that's all that mattered. I had you you cool and Dank. Dank was the other person who was a rock collector. Nice. The uh, I, I like I really liked my stick collection though. I like stick with random holes and like, I don't know. It was just weird stuff. Weird stuff that I was into. Dink and I are very similar. Uh, we have good conversations on the side where he just loves, like, he's almost like a motivational speaker, like the way that yep. he carries himself. And he's just so calm and well spoken. And he just. Everything sounds like it has meaning, and there's just so much gravitas to the words that he chooses. It, it, it's just it's fascinating to me. He's very uh, easy like to listen to. It's cooking for Damien series. Yeah, those, <laughs> I, I mean that he could he could come up with some really if he just needs to cook something that's got meat in it, you know. But but other than that, I mean, he could have some freaking hilarious skits. Yep, and 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 still do something informational, you know. Yep, absolutely. I like his Mister Poppins series. That's probably my favorite one that he uh, he does. And then he's also part of a uh, a writers channel that he invited me to, where it's just a group of like a dozen writers, and they meet every Wednesday, and they just bounce ideas off each other, and uh, mm -hmm. you show your work they provide feedback and it's it's like a, a writer's collective yeah I, just thought it, I thought it was really cool i need i need to get back into that i i used to write a lot and i've got so many unfinished writings yeah i'm with you you know I'm with you get two I or must... three chapters in and then uh yep and then you get distracted by the new shiny thing that's in front of you or the other project right. or something Look, else squirrel. that piques your interest. Yeah, yeah. What's that over there? Oh, that looks interesting. Let me figure out everything about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then it just spirals. But yeah, I definitely want to get back into the writing, but that's... Then I'd ha that would have to detract from something else. Yep priorities i guess yeah i mean there's not <coughs> enough time to do everything that we want but as long as you're i i figure if i'm using my time learning i'm i'm getting something from it and if i feel a sense of enjoyment then that's time well spent and as long as you get all your other stuff done i mean we all have jobs we all have lives but yet we're able to take like, what are we at? Three hours, three hours of our day on a Sunday and just shoot the crap and talk about everything, everything and anything that yeah. your interest and keeps the conversation going. I find it fascinating and also like uh, just enjoyable. Like it's a, it was, it was, I, I don't know. I'm just happy. So thank you for including me in this. Oh no, it's definitely been uh been an experience <laughs> yes. I, I i knew i was going to see some interesting books and some books i hadn't seen before um on well which you know for modern books even 
is oh still... yeah i could show you just random stuff that you've never seen before and it came out like two weeks ago <laughs> and you're like what right. the heck how did i miss that like there's a story called never never it's about it's a retelling of uh peter pan uh but with cannibals and the lost boys are the cannibals <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, there's it's it's an influx of of, of information and content. Mm. Are you gonna show so, the contents of that box? Yeah, what you got? A uh, fox. Well, let me see here. I got I got this for a reason. So let's a camera. Yes, that's the camera that I was talking to you about. I want to get the same one. It's pretty decent. Yeah, do you have it yet? Uh, no, I don't. I I have a a guy who will sell it to me for eighty bucks though, so I think that's a steal. It won't be so, the uh, it won't be the super premiere one that you have though. Um, it's like a it's like a lower model. Nemesis the warrior. Okay. A uh, warlock. Oh, the warlock. Yeah, same difference. <laughs> Uh, a bunch of Richie Rich books. This is just the next thing I'm going to be cataloging. 150. Okay. Archie's. Joke book. Some 10 cent Archie's. And I got more Red Fox in here. Now, I thought I had more obscure titles in this one, but. I guess I don't. And I still, for the life of me, don't know where the obscure stuff came from. <laughs> so I mean... Why, why did I buy this? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sure I bought a collection somewhere, but I just don't remember... Which one? What auction I bought them at, what state I was in, <laughs> what, if I was drinking... Yeah, I was like, yeah, which which state you were location and what state you were mentally. Yeah, exactly. So those will just sit there. I found most of my books I had uh, were uh, were no bags, no bags or boards. From these okay. auctions, so uh -huh. they just you know, how you get two hundred of them then in a short box that way. So yeah. now that I'm cataloging and bagging and boarding those weird ones, yeah, you know, basically everything in this box is overflow from a box that I bagged and boarded. Okay, so gotcha. that's why I'm I keep adding boxes behind me because those. 200 count short boxes turn back into 125 or 150. Yeah, exactly. So you have to keep, I mean, same thing and happened to me. Over. I had to keep buying more drawer boxes uh, for me. I have, uh, let's see. My collection's all right over there. Oh, and you've, you've got them in the drawers? Yep. And then all cataloged and, and, uh, uh, Organized and I have dividers in them, but all the dividers do is take up more space. I can only fit like, is it like okay. I'm going to be 10? making a custom shell for these plastic boxes. Okay, for the BCW ones? Yeah. Um, I'm, I got a kind of a proof of concept to get in place to see how it works. Okay. Um, So that I can put a box. So every every shelf is an independent shelf, basically almost like creating file cabinets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. So every box will sit on its own shelf, and then and have like I can the stack of ten high in here. Okay. What's your uh, ceiling? Is that like fifteen foot? Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um. Just over twelve. Oh, okay. All right. 
And, so, and and would you start from the floor or how elevated are those? Yeah, I start from the floor. I start from um keep yourself like have, six I, inches off the floor or something. Well probably just about a two before is width. Okay. Um off the floor. Do you have uh I'm not even sure where you are. Do you have like fire sprinklers or uh no no okay okay no i don't have i mean there's i guess i've got a copper water line right behind the books but <laughs> yeah you know, that that, that would last a long time that would freak some people out but no not really if it was done right <clears throat> and you could see corrosion yeah well we just pulled one we had a i forget how much it was now it's a several thousand dollar water leak oh okay uh, um may, may might have even been ten thousand dollar water leak we had copper line that was underground uh-huh uh ended up with about a pencil size hole in it yep uh pinhole leak is what we call those and now, are... what, what wasn't it wasn't a pinhole it was a pencil size hole <laughs> Oh, pen, like pencil, like a, yeah. Like a, okay. Wow. Okay. Never mind. Yeah, like like an eighth inch in diameter, probably. Jeez, that had to have been spewing water everywhere. Okay. Well, it was underground, so. Yeah, under cement or. It was under a building. Wow. Okay. Jeez. And that's why it took us so long to find it. Yep. That's a pain in the butt. Okay. Uh, yeah. What's been causing a lot of those is uh, uh, municipal water sources have been adding chloramine to water uh, to filter out fecal matter. They've been doing this since the 80s. And the chloramines attack impurities in the copper and cause those, those holes. And then what happens is once you get the initial hole and the hydraulics of the water escaping the pipe yeah. makes the hole grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you don't handle it immediately, it turns into a bigger problem. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, and the water in this town is terrible. I mean, hot water tanks don't last more than a few years. Oh, that's absurd. Okay. You should yeah. get like 15 years out of your... Uh, you you uh, would think, especially commercial grade. Yep. Which is what we put in all the apartments, but that's absurd. Okay. Well, we just bought your... some of those new ream plastic uh -huh. tanks. We're gonna see how they do. I mean they might hold up to the whatever chemicals they're putting in that's deteriorating the other ones. Yeah. So I'm not a big fan of Ream as a company, but they're I don't know if they come out with something that fits your situation and it heats your water and you could take a warm shower, then why not? Uh, but yeah. So yeah. So what's your, uh, thing with Ream? you you had bad product oh, no, experience or, uh, no, not really. Nothing specific. I just, I, I don't know. I get entrenched in, in companies that, uh, it's Ream has like a, a Home Depot contract and usually like they're cheaper quality and they kind of skimp on that. Like I picture them in like their business meeting trying to figure out how to make screws cost like a penny cheaper. So right. That they can, they can save. I mean, I know cabinet companies that do that. Uh, I don't know. People that are more obsessed with quantity over quality. And Ream to me is one of those companies that's more concerned on uh, quantity and making more sales. But like I said, if they if they produce a product that is specific for your solution, do it. Yeah, well, we'll we'll find out. We'll see if these how long these tanks last. Okay. Yeah, if you're not getting 15 out of your out of your commercial water heater, something's wrong. Yeah. Well, it's eating. I guess I shouldn't say the tank itself, but uh -huh. it's eating up heating elements uh, oh. every <laughs> Shit. every couple of years. The elements, at a minimum. In what fact, some of them don't even last that long. The magnesium rods inside. I mean, you might as well not even have one. 
no um, way those are the sacrificial lambs like they're they're designed to take the the beating and they disappear like immediately yeah they're yeah that's nuts oh man okay yeah and and the heating it's crazy on the heating elements i mean it's that's fucking. Uh, in what fact i put one in one of our rentals um and it was maybe nine months uh-huh. and it had it had ate the heating element i mean it's totally corroded <laughs> what yeah what are they putting, what are the, what are, i'd love to send me send me like a uh a container of just a water bottle whatever, yeah of whatever water and then i'll i'll take it to a lab and get it tested and figure out what the hell's in that water <laughs> that's, that's absurd yeah, because we've we've got a relatively new multi million dollar water plant up on the hill, and it's still that's nuts. The what the timeline that you're telling me right now is is so bonkers. Huh. Yeah, and this is um, like I said, this is our first ream. Bradford White is what we usually. They're decent. Yeah. Bradford yeah. White, American Standard used to be good, but then they had like the big lawsuit that kind of tanked their company, uh, where they put the thermal couple <clears throat> too close to the actual burner, and the burner would melt the thermal couple, and the water heater would stop. Yeah. Um, and they haven't recovered from that yet. And then Bradford White kind of took the lead. There's a couple other companies. Do you know? Yeah, I mean that's our, that's what one of our wholesaler carries of Bradford White, so that's primarily what we've been using. And yeah, and then I got to researching. You know, I thought there's got to be something that holds yep. up to this corrosive water better, and found those plastic tanks from from Ream. I'm like, well, try it out. Give them a yeah. shot. Yeah, let me know too. I'm interested. Uh, I love figuring out like what's in water. It's like the parts per million of like the particles that are in there. And then you can figure out what chemicals are been introduced to it. Like I said, there, you probably have a high level of chloramine, which is chlorine and ammonia. And they share a hydrogen atom. Um, you could check in the municipal water source. They have to, <laughs> there's a law that the U S released that they have to tell you if they're using chloramines or not. If you want to, if you want to check them out, at Ream Marathon is a brand. Okay. Um, and of course, for the, with these being for apartments, we had to get the big commercial units. But um, uh, what size? Like 85, 50, 40? Um, I th think. Looks like those are the three options. The uh, 105. Oh, 105. Jeez. Okay. We got, I think we got two, I don't remember if we got two 105s or two 85s. Jeez, these are expensive too. Yeah. I mean, granted, like a water heater, like a normal water heater is already 800 anyways. Yeah, everything's gone up. Let's try, blah, blah, blah. Polybutene. Okay impervious to corrosion is what their claim is <laughs> no need for, and eliminates the need for an anode rod okay and why not foam insulation perfect for areas with hot or hard water or oh, are they electric yeah okay source 240 volt electricity okay Yeah, let, let me know how it holds up. That's nuts. I've never even heard of these. I mean, I know so far the uh, the tenants all claim to have better pressure and um, more even heat. And it's probably because we've got bigger tanks. But yeah. And we've seen a drop in the electric bill, too, because I think there's a lot better. Because th those old Bradford Whites, we had to wrap the insulation around them. And yeah, these are already insulated. So. Yep. That's what it says. Uh, I mean, you, yeah, you touch it the outside the tank, and it's cool to the. I mean, doesn't even feel warm. And there's just some pretty neat features on them, as far as um, 
ease of hookup where they've got their, their knockouts and yep. Huh? Cool. There. Learned something new in the, in the actual industry that I work in. That's nuts. There's yeah, gotta I, be, I, there's gotta be something in your water. Yeah. It's probably the shit that's going through aliens blood. <laughs> was corrosive as it is yep uh do you have uh do people glow in your town no nobody glows nobody glows um, okay <laughs> although there is a uh there's a there is a plant that has some radioactive byproduct um that they manufactured vanadium oh Okay. We have a vanadium plant. Oh, geez. Okay. And that's that's actually the metal that I wanted to use for my solid state battery was vanadium. Um, it, yeah, they they um, great. There's and they used product. to the, uh -huh. the all the kind of the and I you know back then I guess they they either didn't know it was radioactive or didn't care, but they always uh -huh. had this slag left over, and they just had it piled out in the back and like hey, anybody that wants to come get it. And there's like so many building sites that are lined with this. Oh, yeah, there's no. like, you know, yeah. I mean, free tiling to put free, down, yeah, you know, free, before free you pour materials. concrete or whatever. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. That sounds like a lawsuit. <laughs> well, it, um, I think they'd probably claim that, it was stolen material, so. Okay, okay. Fair it was kind of one of those things. There it is. You know, we just don't care if you come get it or not. Okay. Um, but, yeah, uh, Vanadium Corporation. Great. All right. <laughs> Vanadium is an interesting metal. So you're playing with a tape measure, and I'm playing with this little thing that I use to blow off my lenses on uh, my cameras. Oh, I'm trying to avoid something. playing with my knife. Ah, okay. Fair enough. My, we've all got to have our fidget spinners, right? Yep. Yep. Or stress balls or just something to keep the mind occupied while you try to sort out the craziness that's happening in our heads. <clears throat> I, we're talking plumbing. I just found a clamp sitting here. Yeah, there you go. Nice little pipe clamp. Those yeah. actually work pretty well if you have the rubber for it. Yeah, that reminded me I that I've got a a permanent solution yet to come up with for a hole for a pinhole I fixed. Okay. What's the permanent solution? Uh I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, okay. There's, <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple different ways to go. It's just in how application. It's in how much new line we want to put in. Okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Because um, it's, oh. it's on copper, and uh -huh. it's like inch, an inch and a quarter main coming in to feed the building. Okay. Decent size. Uh, yeah. Um, It's actually like a three-inch main that comes in. It's, it's down to an uh, inch and a quarter plastic. Okay. Um. Which then is going into copper. Okay. So and where do you where do you make the where do you make the transitions? Um. What do you mean? Where where is it three inch? Where is it inch and a quarter? Where is it copper? Where are the transition points? Do um, you know? Yeah, they're 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 right. They're within a few feet of one another. Oh, okay. So the three inch main comes in and they stow the inch and a quarter plastic to it. Uh -huh. And then the plastic connects into our copper. Okay. So they what's, reduce... the, what's the composition of the three inch main? It's, it's probably old lead. Okay. Oh, so uh, more, more than likely galvanized then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the original feed for the building. Okay. Yeah. They would have used galvanized piping. And then at some point it was reduced with the plastic to go into our copper. Yeah. If you go directly into the copper, then you get electrolysis and the copper wins the fight of electrolysis. 
but mm. leaves it badly damaged and flaked. Uh, that's a fun chemical uh, reaction, copper. And right, iron. so we're just trying to decide if we're going to fix that six inch section with okay. the pinhole or uh -huh. replace as, as much kinda... as you as much as feasible <laughs> right okay right and the pinhole is in the uh, the iron or the 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 copper pinholes in oh, the copper oh it's in the copper okay wow huh yep lovely municipal water here yeah what a pain in the butt and of There's... course it was in a spot where it was spraying backwards against the wall <laughs> So we didn't notice it until, I mean, who knows how long it took. Yeah. You no, know, if the pinhole probably, would have been on the other side where it's spraying out into the hallway. Into your, yeah, and then you'd see it. Uh, you then you would have seen it right away. But... There's got to be like an uptick in your bill uh, where it just like went up and stayed up. Uh, um. Huh. Yeah, we, we were still trying to parse that out. We were we were just recovering from our the pencil size leak underground. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jeez. Those pipe clamps are decent. If you if you install them properly, they'll hold for right, a while. Right, don't and, and don't over tighten. Yeah, I never especially on copper, like you have to use they're designed for galvanized. Like that was their initial like they're designed for the iron pipe and you have to use a size smaller because they fit the copper that way. Uh, but if you, if you have a finesse to it, it'll, it'll last a while. It's definitely not a permanent solution though. No. And we, we put that caveat and everything, but like there's a pipe clamp that I installed 10 years ago and it's still doing fine. And we told them like, Hey, this isn't, this isn't, permanent like you're gonna have to like change this and 10 years have gone by and it's it's still holding so it, it's definitely a touch um yeah you can, uh, you can crush you can crush the pipe and have a huge problem <laughs> so right you, you install them live and then you get it down to a manageable uh and then go a little bit more Yeah, I didn't realize this was going to be a, a plumbing DIY session. I told you, I dabble in everything. We talked about cars. We talked about plumbing. We talked about technology and servers. Like, we're <laughs> we're all over the place. And then we, we casually talked about collecting and all the crap that we like to buy with the money that we make from our real lives. I like that you're into art. I'm just, art is awesome. And I don't, I don't get why people buy variant covers because you can just go to the artist and get your own variant cover. Like if you like it that much. Yeah. Variant is, is the, the FOMO and the speculation. Yeah. That's all, that's all hogwash to me. Yeah. I'm guilty of it. Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> <I'm>, yeah, I <laughs> see some behind I mean, you, I think. Pre pre present. <laughs> We're all we're all guilty of that fact. Yeah, um, one thing I don't fall for though is the uh, store the, exclusives. No, the the uh, the the homage covers. Oh, okay. Um, because it's I I just I see it as somebody being too lazy to come up with their own idea. You know, if they're fair. really paying. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if they're really paying tribute to the original cover, yeah. they give the original artist all the money from that issue. Yeah, there's a. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Jeez, the you know? when I go to San Diego Comic Con, there's a panel that I always go to, and it's about uh, raising money for old retired comic book artists who aren't yep. like have no have no income. Every just, every industry, ha I shouldn't say every, almost every entertainment industry has something like that. Because I hear um, yeah. one of the radio stations I listen to, they push for it for broadcasters. Yeah. Like okay. uh, like broadcaster relief fund or something like that. 
Yep. And it's yep. for all the old DJs who, you know, didn't have retirement plans or whatever yep. stations they worked at or fell on hard times or whatever it may be. But Absolutely. And yeah, I support the, I mean, we had that, that uh, comic auction for uh, cancer. Like, uh, I think that there's part the Chris did. Yeah. Uh, I think that there should also be one for that fund for supporting old comic artists because that's that's who perpetuated all this and yeah got us to where we are now so well yeah i'm sure, sure there's already a fund for that isn't there there is yeah yeah, yeah. but i'm saying like you yeah. could raise money to donate to that fund because they're they're still not where they need to be i think they're at like they support like 30 percent or something uh the numbers are real low that's a bunch of honest people trying to get money for creators that are just can't can't work anymore or don't have work anymore. Or Alzheimer's. That's something that scares the crap out of me, losing your memory. Yeah. I definitely... Yeah. Yeah, that that's gonna suck. Yeah, because <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, there's a there's a sense of peace in that aspect. My neighbor had Alzheimer's and he quit smoking in one day because he simply forgot that he smoked. So he he was smoking one day and then he comes over to my dad the next day and says, "Hey, are these your cigarettes?" And then he goes, "Hey, uh, Bernie, yeah, I I, I don't smoke." And he's like, yeah, me neither. And then he just threw him away. And he never smoked just another day in his life. I guess if you got to find that silver lining. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's exactly what that is. That's the silver not lining in a very tragic story. So. Uh, um, uh, somebody sent me a message about artwork for sale. Oh, cool. I'm just putting stuff away. Um, when's your, what's your, your next video you got ready to go? Uh, next will be, you'll actually really, really like it. Uh, uh, it's going to be a bunny mask review. Um, oh, that's right. You got a, a panel you're doing. Yeah. If, if you're, I mean, I'm at 10 right now. If you're interested, it's going to be Tuesday at, uh, this Tuesday at seven fifteen Eastern. Uh, and it'll probably only be 30, 45 minutes. That's all I'm really allotting for it. And, uh, I think, if you wanted to be on it, you'd probably take Austin LeMay's spot because Austin is kind of on the fence about it. Um, I'll probably just chime in from the peanut gallery. Yeah, that's cool. Same with uh, Manny uh, Tremoro Cinema. He's going to be, uh, he elected to be in the live chat. Yeah, it's no. gonna be it's gonna be a bunch of I mean some people you will know and then uh, uh, quite a few you won't know because uh, I kind of came from like a different YouTube community and a lot of those people are jumping on. Oh man, these are some nice pages. Uh, what are they from? Early. Um... Jim Valentino Shadowhawk pages. Oh shoot! Okay, cool. Let's see if I can switch over to this. Oh man. Guess what I need? More expensive artwork to buy, right? 
Uh, I don't know if I want to take the point of being an enabler or <laughs> <laughs> something else. And it's, it's funny because there's one piece of artwork that I've been looking at for several years uh, on a dealer's, an artist site. Uh -huh. And I haven't, it just sits there and I haven't bought it yet. Um, and I know I'm going to look on there one day and it's going to be gone. Yeah. And I'm going to be this. Yep. Yep. Been there. You know, it's like every time I think, oh, you know, I'll just go buy that. Uh, something else pops up. Yep. And the piece has gone up $500 in the time from when oh, I first shit. noticed yeah. it on his site. Uh -huh. He had it for sale for like $1,000. Uh -huh. And sometime within the last year, he's jumped it up to fifteen hundred. Oh, jeez. Okay. So just you know, me waiting that long is going to cost me an extra five hundred dollars at least. And that's not really a negotiable thing, is it? No, not with this guy. It's this. This is my price. Got it. Now, a few years ago, maybe five, six years ago, I can't remember. He went on. Um. He was raising money to go on a sabbatical. Okay. So he had like a 25% or 35% off sale on everything oh, cool. in his in his store. Yeah, where do you um, stop at that point? <laughs> and I honestly I don't know. I didn't get anything. I and I really? can't I can't remember why. I just I kicked myself now. 30% off, and that was like the only sale he's ever had? That's the only sale he's ever done, yeah, that, that I can remember seeing. Got it. Dude, I might get that page just because it's the cheapest one he has. The one that went up $500? No, 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 a, a Valentino page. Oh, okay. Um... Three, four. I always forget what camera I'm on. It's just pretty simple. <laughs> it's pretty cool, too. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of is. I mean, it's... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with simplicity. It doesn't have to be super intricate to, for it to be good art. Um, I mean, for 350 bucks for a Valentino page, I mean, it's not, not too shabby. Yeah. I mean, it's not as cool as this page, but it's also $2,500 for that page. Holy crap. So that's, it's actually two page spread. That's cool. Two Frank. The nightmare is over. Did you see that? Uh, second page to the right, bottom left corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See it now. Do you know any Franks? I do not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually do know one. Now, yeah, I do. Man, there's some nice $2,500 pages, but, you know, and that's the other thing when it comes to collecting artwork. Do you, do you pop buy a lesser page just to say you have a piece from a particular artist? Um, or do I would, you I would buy, buy, that, that I want. buy that banger piece that's got, I mean, yeah, for $300, I can get a, this page. Yeah, it's got a little more than that, you know, simple page. It's actually yeah. fifty dollars less, you know. But again, that's just saying you have a piece by the artist. So you know? if if all you or have to you compare buy, is his his pieces, uh, no, I get what you're saying. Like, do do you cut the price and get? something so that you have something or oh wait a second what 
which mm-hmm. apparently is a is a homage cover to Crisis. Yeah, Death of Supergirl. Okay, and that's three thousand dollars. Jesus. Uh, my personal opinion, out of all the ones that you showed me, I really like the no one. The no. I mean, yeah, I mean, it kind of grows on you. I mean, yeah, it's, I think it looks cool. You know, then here's my, a two-page spread for eight hundred. Okay. See, that's all. Just like, what? What do you? It's hard to parse out. Like, what do you collect? What are What are you after? Yeah. What is your What is your goal? You know, and this would be something for the for the binder. Um, That's pretty cool too. If this is an eight hundred dollar page. Okay. Valentino work doesn't come up very often. Not at all. No, I mean it's not as desirable as obviously like McFarland or even you know Liefeld work. I think, but. Um, okay. You know, when it's one of the old guards of image, though. My eyes are still directed to the no one. I think it stands out. All right, I'm going to have to think those over. I mean, you you gotta you have to factor in price point regardless. I, I yeah. I mean. You can get the most elaborate one, but then for the same price, you can get like six less ones. Six point. All right. Well, I think I'm going to have to be the one to tap out of this. Sounds good. Like I said, I, I was just packing up. All right. You would. Yeah, you lost your goggles. But um, <laughs> what what no, type of goggles are those? Uh, these are just construction goggles. Oh, okay. Just safety goggles. Yep. Just to keep my I thought maybe they're like ski them. goggles or something. No, I mean they are pol- they are polarized though. I can use them to ski, but they fog up too easily. Uh, there's no there's no vents on the side and you need those to ski or snowboard. Yeah. So Yeah, let's let's go ahead and call it. It's been fun hanging out with you. All right, yeah, just just shy of four hours. I don't think we're yep. going to have any uh, full watchers. I, no, I no, to, not at all. I have to decide if I'm going to maybe yeah, chalk. Where, wherever you want to cut it, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to do creatively, it's your it's your decision in the end. Uh, the conversations were all over the place. <laughs> so, um, Yeah, I think I might just cut the whole – uh backstage out for a second and post it as a second video on its own sure why not yeah um uh, that's probably the smarter thing to do yep i don't know i'll think about it whatever so. yeah whatever you decide and then uh we'll talk uh uh whatever we want to do to promote it or whatever okay uh, and it'll air the uh, 16th. No. Yeah, second. 16th. Got it. Okay, cool. All Sounds right. good. It's been fun, Kyle, or Jennifer, yep. or whatever. Whatever you want to call me. That's perfectly fine by me. <laughs> See you later, Scott. All right, bye.